Daddy. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. Almighty and most merciful God, we give all the glory and honor to you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity you have given to us to speak your word. And pray, Almighty and merciful God, that you open our heart to receive your word. A word that will transform us, a word that will change your world. We invite your Holy Spirit to dwell among us now. May the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome every one of you here tonight. It's an exciting night. Mm. I know, looking at your faces, I believe that every one of you have a wonderful week. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, the smile on your face confirms God's glory in our life. Mm. Whenever we have this opportunity to be a messenger for God to speak His word, it's very exciting. So I'm so excited to be here to speak to you. Tonight, I want to say something that maybe you have ever thought about it or never. Have you ever thought of being in a situation very uncomfortable for you? A situation that you know is not right for a Christian to be a situation that is so messed up and you decided I'm not going to have it. I want to change something. I want to be different. And that is what God has called us. The church is a body that has been called out to be different. People that would be different to change the world. I want us to turn to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 and I will read from verse 17 through 39. The aim is to remind us, and my topic tonight is there to be different, and the aim is to remind us that God wants to true worshipers, and we are called to be the change agents to speak against the evil mm. whenever it appears. Mm. Amen. To speak against corruption, to change situations. Because so many times, so many people keep quiet. Some people, when they see things, they decide to leave it alone. And then there are people, when they see things, they get very uncomfortable and they want to change something. And that brings me to the story that we're about to read. A story about a man that lived in a society that was so corrupt, being ruled by a wicked king and a wicked queen. And the people in that time have decided to abandon God and go about their own ways. But he was very uncomfortable. And he dared to be different. So I will read from First King chapter 18 from verse 17 through 39. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is that you? You the destroyer of Israel. He replied, I have not destroyed Israel, but you and your father's house have, because you have abandoned the Lord's command. Mm. and full of bowels. Now summon all Israel to meet me at Mount Carmel, along the 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab summoned all the Israelites and gathered the prophet at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached the all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. Mm. But if Baal follow him. Mm. But the people didn't answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I am the only remaining prophet of the Lord. Mm. But Baal has Baal prophet of 450 men. Let two booths be given to us. They are to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and place it on the wood, <coughs> but not like the fire. Mm. I would prepare the other bull and pl place it on the wood, but not light the fire. Then you call on the name of your God. I will call on the name of my God, mm. of Yahweh, the God who answers with fire. Mm. He is God. Mm. All the people answered, that sounds good. Mm. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, since you are so numerous, choose for yourself one bull and prepare it first. Then call on the name of your God, but don't light the fire. 
So they took the bowl that he gave them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Baal, answer us. But there was no sound. No one answered. Then they danced, hobbled around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them. He said, Shout louder, for he is God. Maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he has wandered away. Mm. Or maybe he is on the road. Mm. Perhaps he's sleeping. Wake him up. They shouted louder and cut themselves with knife and spear, mm. according to their custom, until blood gushed all over them. All afternoon they kept on raving until the offering of evening sacrifice, but there was no sound. No one answered. No one paid attention. Elijah, then Elijah said to all people, Come near me. So all the people approached him. Then he repaired the lost altar that had been torn down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of tribe of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel will be your name. Mm. And he built an altar with the stones in the name of Yahweh. Then he made a trench around the altar, light enough to hold about four gallons. Mm. Next, he arranged the wood, cut up the wood, and placed it on the wood. He said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the offering to be born on the, on the wood. Then he said a second time, and they did it a second time. And then he said a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. He even filled the trench with water. At the time of the offering, the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, mm. today let it be known that you are God in Israel, mm. and I am your servant, and that your name, your word, I have done all this. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you, Yahweh, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then Yahweh's fire fell and consumed the burning offering, the wood, the stone, the dust, and the lick of the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, Yahweh is God. Amen. Yahweh, mm. he is God. Mm. What an exciting story. Mm. Amen. Sometimes there are things that you read in the Bible, your heart will be filled with joy. This is an encounter. Because an encounter that God shows his primacy, he shows that truly he said God. But I don't want to go into that area. I want to look at something different. Why this man was so special? Why he dared to be different? He was living in a society. The Northern Kingdom, when they separated from Israel, they had Je Jeroboam. After Jeroboam came some other king, and now we have Ahab and their wife. What did they do? If you go back to the preceding chapters, it says that they worship idol. Mm -hmm. They introduced Asherah and other mm -hmm. gods of the Baal. What they also did that they turned the hearts of the people to follow them to worship idol. And this man, Elijah, a prophet of God, a man that God has anointed to speak his word, a man filled with courage, a man that was living in a time of great apostasy, yet he chose to be different. Yet he dared to be different. He condemned the lifestyle. Of his people. He confronted Ahab and King Jesus and the Queen. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I don't know how the height, the Bible didn't tell us, but I believe that he has courage for him to go before the king to have the other city and say to the king, mm -hmm. 
You need to change your way. Amen. God is calling somebody here tonight. It may be you. Don't look at yourself and say, I'm so little. How could God use me? Mm. We live in a society that is so messed up. But God is looking for somebody that dare to be different. Amen. Somebody that can change the society. Mm. Somebody that can turn away from corruption and say, there is a right way. As children of God, God has called us to be different. Elijah was a man that challenged his people to return to the true worship of Yahweh. Mm. He said, I'm going to prove something to you guys here today. I know you are so many. 400, 450. Yes, let's do something. And after this, I want you, because you have so much into this God, you believe that he can save. But I'm here to tell you, there is nothing that God mm. is empty. But I worship Yahweh, the true God. Guess what? It's a simple test. Mm. Amen. Bring, bring your offering. I bring mine. Let's do something. But I'm going to tell you something today. My God, the Yahweh God, is a God that answered by fire. Mm. Let the God that answered by fire, let him be the true God. What an audacity. Yeah. Amen. It's a man that believed that Amen. actually yeah. there is a true God. Mm. Amen. He risked his life in the face of a trade. Because if you read this story, it says that he was in the bush for three years. Mm -hmm. But before that, he trusted God and speak a prophetic word that there shall be no rain. Mm. And there was no rain. Then suddenly God says, it's time for you to show your faith. Mm. It's time for you to let the people know that there is God. Because in his mind, he was crying to God, I'm the only one left. Mm. God said, no. There are still some people that worship me. But before you that, I want you to go back. I want you to confront Ahab. I want you to confront the, the prophets of Baal. To prove to them that I, the Lord, is the true God. Beside me there is no God. Mm. It's a short story. But a story that transforms our life. That let us know that as children of God, we have been called to be different. Now, let us look at the characters of this man. What the Bible says that he is. Number one, he said that Elijah was a man of faith. Let's look at James chapter 5, mm. verses 17 and 18. James chapter 5, 17 and 8. Elijah was a man with nature like ours, yet he prayed earnestly that it will not rain, and for three years and six months, it did not rain on the land. Mm. Mm. To be different, you have to have a power that supports you. And how do you get connected to that power? It's through prayer. Amen. See, we always say that prayer is a master key that unlocks everything. See, the enemy knows if you're a prayerful Christian, you mm. can be shouting your mouth, ah, da, 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 da. but the enemy knows. We know of the story, the sons of the sick I believe that they were not praying because when they saw the apostle, what they were doing, they got excited and they thought, ah, we can do it. But what they didn't know is that before the apostles are in the public arena, they have prepared themselves mm. through prayer. Amen. And they said, give us that power. Mm. The enemy said, Peter, I know. Paul, I know. But you, I have no idea. Mm. Amen. So Elijah was a man that is so prayerful that his word becomes mm. a command. And that word was the word of God that he prayed for Rain, not, not to be there for three years. That is an, an interesting story. It happens from where I came from in Nigeria. It's a true story, I won't call name. But we have this great man of God. Do you know what he does? He has a conventions, he has outreach, and he has a gatherings that when people gather, people are here, are prayed for, and they are here. So one of his uh, convention, the guy that was going with him, on that very night, he fell sick. 
At the time for him to be at the arena, he said to his uh, assistant, I don't think I can do it tonight. I need you to go out there and preach. I need you to go out there and pray for people. And the guy said, mm -mm, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> there is no way. When they announced this, your name was on the bill, but nobody knows him. He said, yeah, you can do it. The guy said, no, he said, you have to do it. I said, OK. So the guy went there. When it was time for altar call, he started praying. He, he started praying. And nothing happened. He prayed for the first person. Nobody fell under the anointing. He turned around and looked at the man. I told you, nothing is going to happen. This is for you. <laughs> nothing. He said, and he, he whispered to him, keep on praying. Amen. And he keep on praying. By the time he got to the fifth people, to the fifth, fifth person, people were falling under the anointing. You know what? The man discovered the word of Christ. That we have to have a faith that are like mustard seed. Mm. Because this guy was looking for a huge super faith. Mm. Christ says, All I needed for you is to have this faith that is like a mustard seed. It's the tiniest of all seed. Mm. He is calling you today to have a faith that, that is so minute. Don't think that, Oh, I'm Shelby. I'm not that big. <laughs> Don't think I'm Jack. I'm just only uh, 20, 23 years. No. God is saying unto you, because I have called you, just trust me. I'm the one that will do the work. Mm. That's Amen. what Elijah did. Elijah is a man that has faith. And that faith was the faith that he was able to speak the word of God. And there was no rain. Elijah was a man of courage. A man that believes that the word of God has power. A man that knows that there is nothing better than serving God. Let's look at 1 Kings, where we read 18, 7 and 8. While Abdiah was walking along the road, Elijah suddenly met him. When Abdiah recognized him, he fell with his face on the ground and said, Is it you, my Lord Elijah? It is I, he replied. Go tell your Lord, Elijah is here. What an understanding. This was a person that has run away for three years, hiding in the bush. Now God says, I need you to go back to the person who is looking after the king. And now he presented himself while he was walking. Abdiah, who was a true worshiper, recognized him. Mm. And said, is that you? If you read the story, Abdiah was shaking. He said, people have been sent everywhere looking for you. And when they find out that you are not there, guess what? A death sentence awaits him. Mm. And then if I go to the king and say, I saw Elijah. By the time they get back, you have disappeared. You know what? The king will kill me. But he says, go to the king. Tell your king that I am here. Tell your king. Did I tell you that Elijah has a nickname by the king? The king called him the troubler of mm. uh, Israel. Mm. He had to be different because if he wasn't different, I have, we never have called him a troubler. He got that name because he tried to change the society. Amen. He got that thing because he wanted to do things the way of God. And now he has the audacity to present himself, the courage to present himself before God and before Ahab. And he said, I am here. I'm not running away any longer. Mm. I am here to finish the job that I have started. I am here to proclaim the word of God. You have to hear it. Mm. I'm not running away. Amen. Elijah was a man with moral. See, what has it is so deep into Christians <laughs> is that we see things and we say it's okay. Here in America, everybody try to be politically correct. Well, man can marry man. Yeah. Woman can marry woman. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Do what you want. Mm. God loves everybody. 
Is that what the Bible says? So if you're a sinner, God loves you, I beg to differ. God is calling us to be different. It doesn't matter the cost. Because who we are so afraid? If I speak the truth, I might lose my job. If I say the truth, my boss will not promote me. If I say that God had sin, I will not be your friend anymore. Mm. But God said, you have to have a moral. Elijah has a good moral that set him apart from the people of his time. He has a good moral that knows that God had sin. He has a good moral that set him to make him different. Then Elijah, when you read 1 Kings 18.21, Elijah approached all the people, and he said to the people, how long will you have stayed between two opinions? Mm. If Yahweh is God, mm. follow him. Mm. But if Baal, follow him. The people didn't answer him a word. Mm. Somebody, God is saying to you tonight, if you know that I am God, trust me, follow me, because I'm not going to mislead you. But if you think that there is any other thing out there, go and follow. You will find out the truth. You know what? The Bible made it clear that forever the word of God is settled in heaven. What God has ordained will always come to pass. It's not going to change because of you. You might have the best face in the world. God is not going to change his way because of you. Because God said in the book of Isaiah, every word in Isaiah 55, every word that has come out of my mouth will never come back void unto me until it has fulfilled. But we have never taken our time to ask ourselves, what are the words of God? God says, I am holy. Be ye holy. That's the word of God. Amen. God said that there is no other God beside me. God said, that shall not kill. All the things that God has said, we have never mm. taken our time to look at what God mm. has said. But tonight, we saw a man that dared to be different. Mm. A man that has the moral to believe that God is God. Elijah is a man that believes in God. Mm. First King 18, 1 and 2 says, After a long time, the word of God came to Elijah in the third year. Go and present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the surface of the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Hmm. Remember, Jezebel was looking after this man. Mm. Ahab was looking after him. But he had a word that says, I want you to go back. Mm. Present yourself to the king. Many of us are weak Christians. We are so comfortable where we are that when God says, I want you to move, um, are you sure? <laughs> Is God telling you that? Mm. Do you really hear the word of God? Can we fast some more? And maybe, because we want God to change. Some of us, we are so comfortable here. And someday, God says, My daughter, I want you to go to Peru. All right. I want you to go to Africa. Mm. I want you to go and present you and yourself. Because there are people that need to hear my word. Mm. Amen. God said to Elijah, go back and present yourself to the king. And he believed God. Mm. Because he knew that greater is he that is in him than he that is in the world. Mm. The word of God is power. When God calls you and says, I have set you apart. Never be afraid. Because there was no fear in this man. Before that, he was so afraid that King Ahab and his wife might kill him. But the moment that he heard the word of God and said, go back to the king, present yourself to king, he might. When you hear that word, get off from your seat. Mm. Never be afraid. Dare to be different. And you will see what God will do with, within you. Because it's no longer you. Remember. Oh, I get excited when I hear mm. this word. Amen. When he says, it is I. Mm. Remember, Jesus Christ said the same thing to Peter. Mm. When he was walking on, on the lake at night, they, he, they thought that it was a ghost. And then Peter said, Lord, is it you? And he said to Peter, it is I. It is I. God 
God is saying to you today, walk, get up, get up. I need you to be different. I need you to change my society. I need you to call my people back to me. Amen. There is so much sin in the world mm. now, but you, you will be the change agent that I will need. Mm. Any people who are committed to God. Elijah was a man that was committed to God. First King 18, verse 30. Elijah said to the people, Come near. So all the people approached him. Then he repaired Lord's altar that had been torn down. Hmm. When he called them back and they saw the glory of God, when God ate his sacrifice, the God that answered by fire in his sacrifice. He said, no, I don't have to prove anything anymore to you. I have demonstrated the power of God. Do you know what? We're no longer going to follow Ahab and his wife. We are going to turn around and repair all the altar that had been torn down. God needs commitment from us. That with us, he can change the whole world. Mm. Only with 12 apostles, he turned the world upside down. Today you have ABC because God has called you to be here. There was something inside you. Only you hear that voice. And that voice is still speaking to you today. I want you to be committed because the altars of God have been turned down. So many people, they worship their world. Mm. In our school, there is no prayer anymore. Mm. In our homes, we are so much busy that we don't even call our children to pray together anymore. But today, God is saying, my altar needs to be rebuilt. Are you willing to be the agent that God will use? Mm. Yeah. Are you willing to be a change agent? Are you willing to dare to be different? To say, I'm no longer going to live my life in sin. I'm going to live my life as a child of God. I'm going to change my way. The things that I used to do, I'm not going to do it anymore because I have found joy. You know what Paul said to the Romans? That once you have given your life to Christ, he says in Romans 8, now therefore there is no condemnation. There is nothing that can hold us back anymore. Get excited about the work of God. Get excited. Get up. Get up. And say, God, I am ready. I want to be different. Because I know that there is a reward for anyone that worship God. Amen. When people are called to change the air and turn back to true worship, we have been called by God to change the air and turn back to true worship. To be different, we have to have faith. To be different, we have to have courage. To be different, we have to have good moral. Above all, we have to believe in He who has called us and be committed to do the works of God, to tear down the idols of our hearts and dare to be different. May God help us. God is challenging you and God is challenging me tonight. I know I have spoken to you and I believe that the Spirit of the living God will make this real in our life. And as someday we will graduate from ABC and we will become the change agents. We will be there to be different. Mm. And the world will never be the same. Amen. May God help us. <laughs> Amen. Great sermon.